All right, good afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist for Misha Shade. You know what time it is. It's time to see what's happening in the tropics. We'll check and see if there's anything we need to be worried about across the Houston area and the rest of Southeast Texas. And a look at what's ahead. Well, we do have a hurricane now in the Atlantic, so we do have something to be concerned about, but there's some good news for the US. It looks like it should stay away, but we do officially now have Hurricane Ernesto. That makes it the third hurricane of the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. We've also had two tropical storms. Of course, Tropical Storm Alberto, which was our first named storm. And briefly, we had Tropical Storm Chris, which was our third named storm of the season. Then, of course, we had Barrel, which at one point was a Category 5, hit the Houston area as an 80 mile per hour category one hurricane. We had Debbie, which hit Florida last week as a category one hurricane and then dumped a lot of rain across the eastern portion of the US. And now we have Ernesto. Ernesto, of course, wreaking havoc across Puerto Rico last night this morning, dumping several inches of rain and also producing some strong gusty wind. But now it is a hurricane. So next on the list would be Francine. Hopefully we won't have that one anytime soon. And at this point, I'm not really seeing any other systems that look impressive enough to become our next name storm just yet. But let's talk about Hurricane Ernesto. It is, like I said, officially the third hurricane of the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season, and it dumped nearly 10 inches of rain across parts of Puerto Rico between last night and this morning. So you know what that means, a lot of flash flooding, and there's a big chunk of the island still dealing with that flash flooding threat. We've had several flash flood warnings with some folks picking up several inches of rain. It is expected to become a major hurricane by Friday as it gets close to Bermuda. So the good news is that it is expected to stay away from the US. It will stay far away from the Gulf of Mexico. But the bad news is that Bermuda will likely have some fairly significant impacts because it will push pretty close to Bermuda by the end of the work week and into the weekend. Here's a look at Ernesto right now. You can see that big blob of convection showers and storms, that circulation, that center to the north and west of the island of Puerto Rico right now. Still getting some rain bands crossing over parts of Puerto Rico, but the worst of this system is now off to the north and west of Puerto Rico. And it was never a direct landfall or direct hit for Puerto Rico. This system basically brushed just to the north and east of the island, but it still moved close enough to Puerto Rico to produce several inches of rain. Let me show you what's going on with Hurricane Ernesto, the latest coordinates, the latest advisory. This is the 4 p.m. advisory that came out just a couple of minutes ago. And at this point, it is moving to the northwest at 16 miles per hour. That pressure continues to fall a bit. It's under 1,000 millibars, and we have 75 mile per hour wind. So this is a strengthening system. In fact, as we go along through the forecast, you can see 85 mile per hour winds by early Thursday morning, 1 a.m. Thursday. That's still a category one hurricane. Notice it's also taking more of a north to northeasterly shift as we get into late Thursday and Friday. Category two hurricane expected by 1 a.m. Friday with 110 mile per hour winds. And as we get into early Saturday morning, 1 a.m. Saturday, we are expecting this to be very close to category three hurricane status, likely a strong category two hurricane with 110 mile per hour winds as it gets dangerously close to Bermuda. It will likely track just to the west of Bermuda, but that will mean still some significant impacts to Bermuda. Storm surge still possible and also the threat for some very heavy rain and some strong gusty wind because this could be a major hurricane or at least close to it as it pushes very close to Bermuda. After that, it is going to continue to push off to the north northeast and get fairly close to Nova Scotia, Canada by this weekend. But notice it stays away from the US. There could be some high rip current risk for parts of the eastern 
coast of the U.S. and some high surf, but I'm not expecting any widespread significant impacts from Ernesto, at least for the United States. So that is some good news. But here's a look at where we're expecting Ernesto to go and some of the systems that will kind of help to steer Ernesto. We've got a big heat dome or big area of high pressure over us over the south and southeastern U.S. So it's not coming here. We've got another big area of high pressure across the central Atlantic and then we've got a trough up into parts of Canada and the northeast U.S. So Ernesto will continue that track to the north and eventually shifting to the northeast, kind of speeding up a bit for Thursday, Friday and Saturday, but it will basically continue north getting close to Bermuda in between these two areas of high pressure. And then we got that little trough in the middle. So it's not going to be a big deal for the US. Like I said, maybe some rip current risk, high surf, big surf for parts of the East Coast, but not expecting a direct landfall for any part of the US. Let's track this with our exclusive Fox model and you will see it pulling away from Puerto Rico by 5 p.m. this evening. You can see that eye wall there, that center of circulation and all of the rain bands rotating around it moving away from Puerto Rico, moving away from Hispaniola and pushing away from Cuba and the Bahamas. So it will be pushing mainly to the north and getting closer to Bermuda by Friday evening. I think by Saturday it is very close to Bermuda. It's a very strong hurricane, likely either a category two or maybe even a major category three. And then after that, it will start to push even farther north up closer to Canada. So no major impacts expected from Ernesto, no other systems out out there that we're monitoring that could blow up and become our next tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane. However, we are getting into the part of hurricane season where things usually get pretty interesting out there and fairly busy. We've still got plenty of warm water to work with. Water temps in the Gulf, the Western Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, well into the 80s, even into the low 90s in a few spots. So that is super warm and steamy water. And that, of course, acts as that fuel to help keep these systems going once they develop. So bottom line, don't let your guard down. We are not expecting anything to head our way for now, but we're still expecting the rest of this hurricane season to be fairly busy. The latest NOAA forecast still calling for 17 to 24 named storms, eight to 13 of those becoming hurricanes, four to seven becoming major hurricanes. And of course, the latest update from the Colorado State University meteorologist calling for 23 named storms out of those 12 becoming hurricanes and out of those six becoming major hurricanes. That's actually double of the number of major hurricanes that we would see in an average season. So still we are expecting an unusually busy hurricane season. And if it's going to happen, it likely will happen between now and the beginning of October. That is usually the busiest period, mid to late August, all of September through early October. Things can get hectic in a hurry. You can start to see these systems, these tropical systems lining up one after the other. Now we do have a little bit of Saharan dust out there in parts of the Atlantic and starting to push into parts of the Caribbean and Gulf. So that may help to hinder activity for the short term. But as we get into late August and especially September, we are expecting some of that dust to clear out. And that is when things could start to get very active on it. So of course, make sure you're prepared for anything. Make sure you've got your hurricane gear ready to go. Know your evacuation routes. Make sure you know your insurance coverage before a storm starts to threaten the Houston area.